Third Day of Waiting on God by Andrew Murray. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Christopher Smith. Waiting on God, the true place of the creature. These wait all upon thee, that thou mayest give them their meat in due season. That thou givest unto them, they gather. Thou openest thine hand, they are satisfied with good. Psalm 104, verses 27 and 28, Revised Version. This psalm, in praise of the Creator, has been speaking of the birds and the beasts of the forest, of the young lions, and man going forth to his work, of the great sea, wherein are things creeping innumerable, both small and great beasts. And it sums up the whole relation of all creation to its Creator, and its continuous and universal dependence upon him in the one word, These all wait upon thee. Just as much as it was God's work to create, it is his work to maintain. As little as the creature could create itself is it left to provide for itself. The whole creation is ruled by the one unalterable law of waiting upon God. The word is the simple expression of that for the sake of which alone the creature was brought into existence, the very groundwork of its constitution. The one object for which God gave life to creatures was that in them he might prove and show forth his wisdom, power and goodness in his being each moment of their life and happiness, and pouring forth unto them, according to their capacity, the riches of his goodness and power. And just as this is the very place and nature of God, to be unceasingly the supplier of every want in the creature, so the very place and nature of the creature is nothing but this, to wait upon God and receive from him what he alone can give, what he delights to give. See note on law, the power of the Spirit. If we are in this little book at all to apprehend what waiting on God is to be to the believer, to practice it and to experience its blessedness, it is of consequence that we begin at the very beginning and see the deep reasonableness of the call that comes to us. We shall understand how the duty is no arbitrary command. We shall see how it is not only rendered necessary by our sin and helplessness. It is simply and truly our restoration to our original destiny and our highest nobility, to our true place and glory as creatures blessedly dependent on the all-glorious God. If once our eyes are opened to this precious truth, all nature will become a preacher, reminding us of the relationship which, founded in creation, is now taken up in grace. As we read this psalm and learn to look upon all life in nature as continually maintained by God himself, waiting on God will be seen to be the very necessity of our being. As we think of the young lions and the ravens crying to him, of the birds and the fishes and every insect waiting on him till he give them their meat in due season, we shall see that it is the very nature and glory of God that he is a God who is to be waited on. Every thought of what nature is and what God is will give new force to the call, Wait thou only upon God. These all wait upon thee, that thou mayest give. It is God who giveth all. Let this faith enter deeply into our hearts. Ere yet we fully understand all that is implied in our waiting upon God, and ere we have even been able to cultivate the habit, let the truth enter our souls. Waiting on God, unceasing and entire dependence upon Him, is, in heaven and earth, the one only true religion, the one unalterable and all-comprehensive expression for the true relationship to the ever-blessed One in whom we live. Let us resolve at once that it shall be the one characteristic of our life and worship, a continual, humble, truthful waiting upon God. We may rest assured that he who made us for himself, that he might give himself to us and in us, that he will never disappoint us. In waiting on him, we shall find rest and joy and strength and the supply of every need. 
My soul, wait thou only upon God. End of third day.